1122 King Road, an off-campus rental house shared by six University of Idaho students, became a crime scene etched in the annals of true crime. On November 13, 2022, four young lives were brutally cut short, leaving a community reeling in shock and grief. The victims, Kaylee Goncalves, Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin, were vibrant young individuals with bright futures. Their dreams were extinguished in a storm of unimaginable violence, leaving behind a void filled with unanswered questions and a thirst for justice. The Moscow murders gripped the nation's attention, prompting a sprawling investigation that tested the limits of forensic science. The house, once a sanctuary of laughter and dreams, was now a silent testament to the fragility of life and the darkness beneath idyllic communities. The evening of November 12, 2022, began like any other Saturday night in a college town. Excitement filled the air as students gathered at parties, enjoying the freedom and camaraderie. Kaylee and Madison prepared for a night out at the Corner Club, a popular local bar, while Zana and Ethan attended a Sigma Chi fraternity party. As the night wore on, the four friends returned to the house on King Road, unaware they were being stalked. The intruder, armed with a large knife, moved silently through the house, leaving a trail of carnage. The crime scene was a testament to the killer's cold-blooded efficiency. News of the murders spread like wildfire through the small town of Moscow, igniting a firestorm of fear and speculation. The tranquility of the Palouse was shattered, replaced by an undercurrent of anxiety that permeated every corner of the community. Students, once accustomed to the safety and familiarity of their college town, were now gripped by fear, their sense of security irrevocably broken. Rumors and speculation swirled through the university and the town, fueled by social media and a constant stream of news coverage. The lack of immediate answers from law enforcement, coupled with the gruesome nature of the crime, created a vacuum quickly filled with conjecture and fear-mongering. The pressure mounted on the Moscow Police Department, a small-town force ill-equipped to handle a crime of this magnitude and complexity. The FBI was called in to assist, bringing with them a wealth of resources and expertise in homicide investigations. The eyes of the nation were now firmly fixed on Moscow, watching and waiting for answers. As investigators pieced together the timeline of events, they relied on eyewitness accounts, surveillance footage, and digital footprints. The sequence of events began to paint a clearer picture. Kaylee and Madison spent the early evening at the Corner Club, captured on security cameras, socializing with friends. Around 1 a.m., they left for a food truck, their movements documented by a live stream video. Meanwhile, Zana and Ethan were at the Sigma Chi fraternity house, confirmed by partygoers and social media posts. Around 1.45 a.m., Zana and Ethan returned to the house on King Road, while Kaylee and Madison arrived shortly after. Between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m., the murders took place. The exact sequence remains unclear, but the brutality left no doubt about the killer's intent. The murders at 1122 King Road sent shockwaves far beyond the borders of Moscow, Idaho. The nation watched in horror as details of the crime unfolded, captivated by the mystery and the senseless loss of young life. The victims, once just faces in a crowd, became symbols of vulnerability, their stories resonating with families across the country. The media descended upon Moscow, their cameras capturing the grief and anxiety that hung heavy in the air. Every development in the case was met with intense scrutiny, fueling speculation and armchair detective work. The pressure on law enforcement to find the killer mounted with each passing day as the families of the victims and the public alike demanded answers. The University of Idaho campus, once a place of learning and growth, was now shrouded in fear. Students, once carefree and focused on their studies, were now burdened with the weight of the tragedy. The murders served as a stark reminder that even in the perceived safety of a college town, evil could lurk in the shadows. The investigation into the Moscow murders was a complex and painstaking process, requiring meticulous attention to detail and a combination of traditional investigative techniques and cutting-edge forensic science. The crime scene, preserved in its entirety, offered a wealth of evidence, but also presented unique challenges. The house, a multi-story rental property, had multiple entry and exit points, making it difficult to determine the killer's movements. 
the presence of six occupants, only four of whom were victims, further complicated the scene, requiring investigators to differentiate between DNA profiles and trace evidence belonging to the victims, their roommates, and potential suspects. The murder weapon, a large knife, was not recovered at the scene, adding another layer of complexity to the investigation. Forensic analysts meticulously combed through the house, collecting fibers, hairs, fingerprints, and any other trace evidence that could potentially link the killer to the crime. Weeks into the investigation, with few leads and mounting public pressure, investigators released a crucial piece of information to the public. They were searching for a white Hyundai Elantra, believed to be connected to the murders. Surveillance footage from the area around the crime scene captured the vehicle driving in the vicinity of the house on King Road in the early hours of November 13, 2022. The release of the vehicle description sparked a nationwide manhunt, with law enforcement agencies across the country flooded with tips from citizens reporting sightings of white Hyundai Elantras. The car, a common model, became a symbol of the investigation, its presence in the footage a tantalizing clue that offered hope of a breakthrough. The search for the white Hyundai Elantra intensified, with investigators meticulously tracking down and clearing thousands of vehicles across the country. The car, they believed, held the key to unlocking the mystery of the Moscow murders and bringing the killer to justice. As weeks turned into months, the investigation into the Moscow murders continued, fueled by the tireless efforts of law enforcement and the unwavering support of a community desperate for answers. Behind the scenes, forensic scientists worked tirelessly, analyzing the wealth of evidence collected from the crime scene, hoping to find the missing link that would lead them to the killer. Finally, a breakthrough DNA evidence recovered from a knife sheath found at the crime scene yielded a match. The DNA profile, compared against a national database, pointed investigators to a 28-year-old man named Brian Koberger, a graduate student studying criminology at Washington State University located just miles from the University of Idaho. The discovery sent shockwaves through the investigation, providing a tangible link between the crime scene and a potential suspect. Investigators, armed with this crucial piece of evidence, began building their case against Brian Koberger, meticulously piecing together his movements, his background, and any possible connection to the victims. On December 30, 2022, nearly seven weeks after the murders, Brian Koberger was apprehended at his parents' home in Pennsylvania. The arrest, the culmination of weeks of intense investigation and surveillance, brought a wave of relief to the Moscow community and the families of the victims, who had endured an agonizing wait for justice. Koberger, a seemingly unremarkable graduate student, was now at the center of a media frenzy, his face plastered across newspapers and television screens nationwide. As details of his background and alleged involvement in the murders emerged, the public grappled with the chilling reality of his alleged crimes. With Koberger in custody, the investigation entered a new phase, shifting from a nationwide manhunt to building a solid case for prosecution. Law enforcement remained tight-lipped about the specifics of the evidence against him, but the DNA match, coupled with other incriminating evidence, painted a damning picture. The arrest of Brian Koberger marked a significant step towards justice for Kaylee Goncalves, Madison Mogenzana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin. But the legal process was far from over. The families of the victims, united in their grief and their pursuit of justice, faced a long and arduous journey ahead as the case made its way through the court system. The trial, when it finally began, would be a grueling test of endurance for the families, forced to relive the horrors of that November night as prosecutors presented their case against Koberger. The evidence, presented in painstaking detail, would paint a chilling picture of the crime, leaving no doubt in the minds of the jury about the brutality of the murders. In the end, justice would be served. The jury, after careful deliberation, found Brian Koberger guilty on all counts. The verdict, a testament to the tireless efforts of law enforcement and the unwavering pursuit of justice, brought a sense of closure to the families of the victims but it could never truly erase the pain of their loss. The conviction of Brian Koberger provided a measure of justice for the victims of the Moscow murders and their families, but it did little to answer the lingering questions that haunted the case. The motive behind the brutal killings remained a mystery, 
leaving a void of understanding that fueled speculation and a thirst for deeper meaning. Why Kaylee, Madison, Zana, and Ethan? What drove Koberger to commit such a heinous act? These questions, unanswered and perhaps unanswerable, would continue to linger long after the verdict was read and the gavel fell. The Moscow murders serve as a stark reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface of seemingly idyllic communities and the fragility of life. The victims, forever young and full of promise, will never be forgotten. Their memories kept alive by the love of their families and the enduring spirit of a community forever changed by tragedy.